Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the resolution to authorize the Minister of Finance to guarantee an amount of EC $80 million from the First National Bank of St. Lucia Limited to the National Lotteries Authority to assist with the financing of a youth and sports infrastructure program. The terms and conditions of this loan, Mr. Speaker, to the NLA are as follows. The loan is repayable in 15 years in biannual payments of $3,571,993.78, inclusive of interest at a rate of 4% per annum for the term of the loan. It is to be noted, Mr. Speaker, that this is a loan to the St. Lucia National Lotteries Authority and not a loan to the central government, as explained by the Minister for Finance. It is to be further noted, Mr. Speaker, that the process for applying for a government guarantee is prescribed in the recently enacted Public Debt Management Act. Mr. Speaker, a section of the aforementioned Act states the process for the application of a loan to be guaranteed by the government. For ease of reference, Mr. Speaker, I shall quote the section. Application for government guarantee, 36-1, prior to the guarantee of a loan under Section 65 of the Public Finance Management Act, number 14 of 2020, a borrower shall make an application for government guarantee to the minister. Two, an application on the subsection one must a specify that one, the purpose of the loan is to achieve a public purpose, and two, the proposed guarantee is expected to serve a specific public policy objective. B, be accompanied by one, the financial statements of the statutory body. Two, legal documentation that A, is prepared by the Attorney General. B, is executed by the borrower whose loan is to be guaranteed. And C, specifies that in the event of default by the borrower, A, A the government is indemnified of any liability. And B, B, the borrower commits to repaying the government any money paid by the government to a creditor under the loan guarantee. Section 37, Mr. Speaker, of the Public Debt Management Act states, the process that is required in evaluating an application for government guarantee. In particular, the following factors are considered in the evaluation of the loan. A, to determine whether, one, the loan guarantee is the most appropriate mechanism for achieving the public purpose or the specific public policy objective. Two, the borrower has the ability to repay the loan obligations and fulfill all payment and other obligations under the loan and under the guarantee and related agreements. Three, the terms and conditions of the loan to be guaranteed are consistent with the debt management objectives and the approved strategy. Four, the borrower is in compliance with the prescribed corporate governance required requirements established by the minister. And B, by performing a credit risk analysis of the proposed government guarantee, once the loan is evaluated, in accordance with Section 37 of the Public Debt Management Act, a recommendation is made to the Minister of Finance for grant or refusal of the application for the government guarantee. Mr. Speaker, clearly, the above process shows that the process for obtaining a government guarantee is a very rigorous one and requires, inter alia, a determination of the capacity of the borrower to repair the loan and an analysis of the financial statement of the borrower. 
Based on the foregoing, Mr. Speaker, I am confident that the risk of default by the St. Lucia National Authority must be very low. Because it went through the process. It was subjected to systematic scrutiny, maybe subjected to new levels of critical examination, and of course, was obedient to the provisions. The second part of the analysis I would like to focus on, Mr. Speaker, is that the borrowing must be for a public purpose or a specific public policy objective. In this regard, Mr. Speaker, it is well known that we have a major deficit in youth and sports infrastructure in this country. This is a fact which is not subject to debate or compromise. The major sporting infrastructure in St. Lucia include the Darren Sami Cricket Ground and the George Odlum National Stadium. Currently, the Darren Sami Cricket Ground is being renovated, which is to be completed in time for the hosting of the T20 World Cricket Matches, which are to be played in St. Lucia. And the George Odlum Stadium is to be rehabilitated when the hospital moves out to the St. Jude's Hospital Complex at OG. These major pieces of infrastructure were all implemented by the St. Lucia Labour Party government, Mr. Speaker. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, that financing for sports infrastructure takes a lower level of priority than other infrastructure expenditures. It is to be noted that multilateral organizations like the World Bank and the Caribbean Development Bank do not provide funding for youth and sports infrastructure. The several competing demands on the budget also make it difficult to provide adequate funding for youth and sports infrastructure. Mr. Speaker, sports play an important role in national development. More recently, we were extremely proud when Julian, Julian Alfred won the 60 meters in the World Championship in Glasgow, Scotland. We often wonder how many other Julian Alfreds are in St. Lucia, but who were not discovered the development of sports infrastructure will therefore allow us to nurture and develop more elite athletes, Mr. Speaker, who are capable of competing at the regional and international levels. Julian Alfred has joined illustrious company of global St. Lucian ambassadors who are elevating St. Lucia's image on the international stage. Mr. Speaker, we need to find more of her in St. Lucia who can compete at the global level in their respective sports. This requires, Mr. Speaker, the development of proper sports infrastructure based on international standards. Mr. Speaker, we must recognize that not everyone can reach the level of Ms. Alfred, and we need to be realistic, yet ambitious, in developing ultra-elite sports persons. The playing of sports by the youth has a number of benefits, Mr. Speaker, which are well documented, and a few of them, Mr. Speaker, among the most obvious positive outcomes are improvements in physical health, such as weight control, strength building, increased flexibility, enhance coordination and motor skills, improve cardiovascular health, and pain reduction. People who are physically active often tend to develop healthier lifestyles and better eating habits. Which means, Mr. Speaker, that if we take actions like this, it will restrain the growth of expenditure in the health sector by having healthier citizens, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, another beneficial aspect of sport is the impact that it has on psychological and emotional healing and well-being. Sport provides a positive outlet for stress and aggression. Like I said, Mr. Speaker, these are things that are well documented. Participation in sport can help alleviate depression or anxiety. Physically active people also often experience enhanced self-confidence and improved self-image. There is also evidence that participation in sport improves concentration and mental functioning. And I can go on and on, Mr. Speaker. A very important 
functions of sport, but I will keep it short and prepare to land at this juncture in time. <laughs> These social skills and experiences are readily transferable to other aspects of life and may improve a person's ability to succeed in their future careers. The final point I would like to make, Mr. Speaker, is that sport also provides an alternative to risky or antisocial behavior, creating sufficient structure, discipline, and incentive to keep some people away from drugs, violence, or criminal activity. So, Mr. Speaker, we are all aware of the fact that many of our youth get in, enticed to join gangs and engage in activities that we would prefer to keep under control. It is important to get our youth involved in sporting activities as just one of the aspects of intervention so they can be meaningfully engaged in productive activities. Given the numerous benefits of sports to the development of the holistic individual, it is very important for the government to invest in youth and sports infrastructure. Mr. Speaker, this initiative is complementary to the government's major policy of developing the youth economy. So it's just another component of a wider architecture to deal systematically with the challenges of young people and to, of course, develop our country. Mr. Speaker, I wish to therefore lend my support to the resolution to authorize the Minister of Finance to guarantee an amount, to guarantee an amount of EC $80 million from the First National Bank and Lucia Limited to the National Lotteries Authority to assist with the financing of a youth and sports infrastructure program. Mr. Speaker, thank you, and I yield the floor.